एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल आई हैव बीन मेकिंग अ लॉड ऑफ अकेडमिक कॉन्टेंट ऑन माई चैनल एंड यू कैन गो एंड विजिट द प्ले लिस्ट स्टडी ओनली इफ यू वॉन्ट टू वॉच दैट बिसाइड्स दैट देर इज अ टी एन डी दैट आई टूक रिसेंटली इट हैज़ गुड व्यूज सो आई पुट द लिंक इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स यू कैन गो एंड विजिट दैट एंड आई एम गोइंग टू ट्राई समथिंग न्यू टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू बी टीचिंग अ फ्यू थिंग्स दैट आई रेड इन द पास्ट वन वीक सो आई होप यू लाइक द वीडियो द फर्स्ट इमेज दैट वी सी आई एम गोइंग टू बी डिस्कसिंग अ फ्यू डोमोस्कोपिक इमेजेस सो द फर्स्ट वन that you see here you have um, skin markings so in case of normal skin this is my hand only you have exaggeration of skin pigmentation at the areas where you have skin marking and in between the skin markings you have hypopigmentation there is relative hypopigmentation in the area between it and hyperpigmentation around it but in vitiligo this pigment pattern is reversed that is called reversal of the pigment pattern now if you talk about vitiligo in vitiligo we have chalky white hypopigmentation that is the areas are completely white besides that they'll have like a good border or boundary which we can clearly demarcate it can be irregular linear round oval whatever but we will be able to clearly demarcate it also if we give a vitiligo patient some treatment there will be repigmentation in the vitiligo patch now that repigmentation tends to occur in a particular fashion for example you can see in this figure that this patient who was given tacrolimus and corticosteroids had hyperpigmentation around the perifollicular area to begin with also you can have pigmentation at the margins of the lesion so this patient again was on steroids and tacrolimus and we can see that the margins of the lesion have pigmentation now this is another patient where who was on prednisolone and we can see some marginal repigmentation here as well also if we treat a patient there is diffuse repigmentation that can be seen in some patients and in that diffuse repigmentation areas in those in those areas where we have this repigmentation we also see white hair strands which is leukodrykia and it indicates a difficulty in treatment which was also corroborative with the history that we had to treat the patient for a very long time besides that this is called vitiligo pontoi we see confetti like macules when we treat a patient with nb uvb and that is visible and we can see that on dermoscopy we see findings classic of vitiligo now there is another disorder called lichen sclerosis atrophicus where we have hypopigmentation uh, in the vulval area now if you see under a dermoscope the feature that differentiates it is the fact that you do not get diffuse ivory white hypopigmentation you have background of erythema you have vessels you can see that there is telling ectasia there are dotted or linear vessels and you can see some white comedo like structures so that is indicative of lichen sclerosis et atrophicus also another patient so this was 3 year old female wherein we see fibrosing lesion but on dermoscopy structureless areas and along with telling ectasia now along with telling ectasia is seen so you can see that there is one dotted vessel there is one vascular structure because of the fold we are not able to appreciate it but there is one vascular structure that we see here so it's not diffusely white again not clear white lesion but we have background of erythema so that indicates lichen sclerosis and atrophicus the post inflammatory hypopigmentation this is a error it's not hyper it's hypopigmentation so it is usually uh it is usually associated with decrease in pigment and not with absence of pigment but here we see a decrease in the pigmentation uh here we see an absence of pigmentation that is seen in uh, diseases like dle so this patient has disseminated dle and we see absence of pigmentation now this is another patient where we have pih one of the classic features of pih is that you won't just see decrease in pigmentation you would also see erythema so you can see that there is visible erythema in the lesions under a dermoscope this is a post burn patient and we have hypopigmented lesions in the patient right now so there's another patient who has a hypopigmented lesion so there was some genital lesion on which he had applied um, some cream which has left the patient with icd and post uh, inflammatory hypopigmentation so we see background of erythema and white lesions now there's another patient who has again uh, hypopigmentation is there but we could see some scales as well 
and there is background of erythema and a provisional diagnosis of allergic contact dermatitis risk. In this patient we suspected PMLE. We have scales along with hypopigmentation. Now P versicolor, there is a sign called double-edged scales. So usually we would have seen two edges of the scales that are present at the margin. But this patient had used steroids and moisturizers. So we are only able to see one layer of uh, scales. And we had kept a provisional diagnosis of P versicolor only. And the patient had responded to ketoconazole. So the uh, diagnosis was most likely to be correct. Now in this patient also, this is a case of P versicolor. So folliculocentric hypopigmentation is there. If, you're, if you can appreciate, around the follicles you have hypopigmentation. And there's something called contrast halo sign. So around these hypopigmented areas, you can also see areas of hyperpigmentation. So that's called a contrast halo sign. So that is seen in P versicolor. Besides that, now we'll discuss leprosy. It also presents with hypopigmented lesions. So in leprosy, there is damage to the sweat gland ducts. When sweat gland ducts are damaged, there is an area of relative anhydrosis. So what you'll see is that the skin markings are exaggerated because the skin is dry. Plus the sweat gland ducts are visible because they get dilated and they're not working as well. So you'll be able to appreciate them better. Now this is something called as nevus depigmentosus. It has feathery margins. If you see under a dermoscope, you'll be able to see faint pigmentation along with areas of hypopigmentation. Um, in idiopathic guttate hypomelanosis, which is a disease that we see in elderly people, you will see hypopigmented lesions. No, not hypopigmented. Actually, they are almost depigmented only. Homogeneous hypopigmentation is there along with pseudopod like pseudopodia like uh, along with amoeba like pseudopods. Uh, it is called something like a nebuloid appearance. So this is seen in idiopathic guttate hypomelanosis. Again, another picture of idiopathic guttate hypomelanosis. So we could see that there are plenty of uh, hypopigmented lesions and I had put in like a lot of effort to collect them. So I thought that it would be better if it reaches the masses because it's a very genuinely done study and I have put in like a lot of hard work to it and hope you enjoyed the video.